Good afternoon. I wanted to start by asking you to think of a time when a loved one needed help, mother, grandmother, and you couldn't, either because you physically weren't there or because you didn't have the financial means. This is the story of so many Africans. We leave home in pursuit of our dreams, dreams often that our parents and our grandparents couldn't. And in doing so, we leave them behind. This is also my story. My name is Zenith Ibrahim and I'm the founder of Jami Life, a platform that connects vetted health workers with people that can't care for themselves and families that need help. Jami Life is inspired by my grandmother. My grandmother was bedridden for 16 years. Um, my family took care of her. I was away from home, so my job was to pay for medical aid, which covered hospital bills and doctors. We never thought that we could afford health workers or expertly trained care. Um, and so, you know, when you think about um, aging populations, we think about the developed world. Um, we think about countries like Switzerland, but in reality, in a country like Ghana or South Africa, there are four times more elderly people that need assisted living than in the developed world. Across the continent, 66 million elderly people will need care by 2050. That number is estimated to be around 5 million people in South Africa by 2050. And today, at least 2 million South Africans need help. That need is met 33% by community health workers. We are grateful for their service, but it's limited in capability and in coverage. And in the fact that they get paid 160 approximately pounds per month which limits their ability to provide for their own families. Then there's the 60% of the population, including families like my own, who use a combination of family members and informal community, community help. It's almost always untrained and unregulated. And then there's the 7% of the population, usually the wealthiest, that can afford private care. This is Alice and Cheryl. I met them on a walk in an affluent suburb in Cape Town, and I was struck by how caring they were towards the woman that they're taking care of. When I went to speak to them, I couldn't help but wish how much I had hoped that my grandmother would be able to access this kind of care. So we found a Jummy Life, and I wanted to take you through our model. So to do that, I need you to imagine that this was four years ago and my grandmother was still alive. I was in Johannesburg and my grandmother was in Cape Town. Jummy Life allows us to connect vetted caregivers like Cheryl to provide the help that my grandmother needs. That information with my grandmother's consent is shared back to the families so that they can track progress over time and share it with doctors if necessary. We're taking vetted care and technology to communities through an integrated platform that allows for standard protocols and quality standards that these communities otherwise won't have, on-demand training for health workers and families um, who often don't have resources themselves, and allows us to track progress including emotional state over time. More broadly, we're starting with direct to patient, um, targeting two pounds per hour. That price point is important because it allows patients, elderly patients themselves, to pay for the service of a jummy carer every weekday with the state pension that they receive, giving them independence. Um, and we pass 80% of the revenue over to caregivers, which allows them to earn double the amount that they would if they were a community health worker. We spent four months last year with community health worker organizations and realize that by streamlining their operations, they can save up to 25% um, more time, improving their ability to serve 25% more people. And that can be extended to traditional nursing agencies. And we hope that that will allow them to either decrease their cost, their price to patients or to pay their health workers more. Our vision is a platform to transform the care system across the continent and provide social infrastructure for the elderly by starting with direct to patient, but partnering with community health work organizations and nursing agencies. Our journey so far, um, we've been blessed with incredible supporters. So we started with funding from Harvard Center for African Studies to do research with more than 100 family members to understand their real pain points. We went door to door to speak to more than 30 care receivers to understand what it takes for a foreign person to go into your home and provide care. This is some of the um, direct caregivers who provide family members with care from the initial research. Um, in Last year, we were awarded £24,000 by Harvard Centre for um, Social Innovation and Change, and we spent time with more than 200 community health workers, including doing a paper-based test so we can understand the innovation that they're driving to serve their patients better. So 
such as using WhatsApp to, to track location and time spent with patients. We're ready to launch on the 1st of July. Uh, we have referral partners in place and an amazing team. So Cheryl, who I mentioned earlier, has joined us. We also have Monica, who interestingly worked in the hospital that my grandmother frequented so many of the six times over the 16 years. We have four interns who are capturing the information that we then visually present back to families before we can build a fully functional app. And this is our amazing all-female team. So I'm the founder. I spent 14 years in the private sector. I led G South Africa Technologies as the GM and CEO. I was the general manager for the affordable healthcare business across the continent. We have Roseanne and Magda who each have 35 years of experience in healthcare. Roseanne across four countries and Magda focused on primary care and geriatrics. And then Sheba and Maggie provide remote support from Boston, Cambridge. They were instrumental in the original um, user design and the product mapping. Again, we've been supported by some incredible organizations and we're very grateful for that. We need an additional £40,000 for year one of operations. So that starts um, at the beginning of July and takes us through the end of June 2021. That will allow us to ramp up to 10 caregivers to build out a fully functional app and to cover year one of operational costs that's in addition to the 24,000 that, that we already have um, and cover things like medical um, diagnostic equipment, etc. We estimate that we need a total of 250 pounds, so 185 additional over the next four years to break even and to build partnerships to serve the 66 million elderly people across the continent. Um, mostly, we're so grateful to have been recognized as one of four finalists for the Skull Award. Um, we believe that this recognition will go a long way to helping us secure additional funding and break even um, in year four. 